The first thing you got to keep in mind about a malignant narcissist, which usually are covert narcissist, is you got to understand that these people, they are also usually psychopaths. And one of the characteristics of a psychopath is that he or she does not have really effective empathy at all. In other words, when they see you, when they are around you, when they talk to you, when they are love bombing you, when they are grooming you, they are viewing you as kind of an inanimate object. They don't mind hurting you because to you, they may as well be hurting, um, they may as well be hurting a tree, you know, has no feelings whatsoever. But it's a little bit more than that, a little bit more involved because the narcissist actually knows that you have feelings. The tree doesn't. In other words, the narcissist would be running around cutting down trees. But nah, he's gone after you. She's gone after you because, well, they know that you feel pain. They know you feel hurt. Now, something we learned about narcissists is that they feel pain, but not the same way that you do, and they they understand that. That is to say, um, psychologists understand that, the medical profession understands that, because they give these people brain scans, or they have in the past. They've studied their brains and how they respond to pain. And what they've noticed is this. When they show these people photographs while they're having their brain scanned of people who are inflicted by pain, uh, they don't feel it. If anything, it gives them a little bit of pleasure. You know, they're scanning their brain, they see the response. But when the narcissist, him or herself, who is a psychopath, when they experience pain, well, then it goes off the charts. So they are hyper, highly sensitive to pain themselves. Store that in the back of your mind. That's why they overreact when they feel slighted or snubbed or even physically injured. They go way overboard. I mean, they fly off the handle because, you know, they just, um, they just are highly sensitive to pain. Now, get this. Because they are highly sensitive to pain, they just kind of presume that you also are equally as highly sensitive to pain. So when they inflict pain on you, what they think they are doing is they are inflicting the same amount of pain on you as they would experience. And they get a kick out of that. They think it's fun. What kind of twisted mind does that? Uh, I don't like to inflict pain on my worst enemies. I don't like to hurt people, you know, even if, uh, even if it's a punishment. I can understand why we would need to do that in some extreme cases, but uh, I'm not even comfortable with that. But a narcissist, nah, he does the opposite. He doesn't think the way you think. This narcissist that was in your life, or maybe still is, get this thought deeply embedded in the forefront of your cerebral cortex, and that is he or she does not think the way you think. So if you're trying to understand the narcissist in the context of you, it's not going to work because you think this way and he thinks that way. And you think you're thinking, if you think the way that uh, normal people think, the way that I think, you think to yourself, how in the world could that person be so mean? How could they be so cruel? Because you are superimposing. We superimpose our perspective onto the narcissist and we just assume they're the same. But they're not. They get it. They get a thrill. They get a kick out of hurting other people. One of the indicators of a psychopath in their early years who becomes a serial killer is they like to inflict pain on little helpless animals. And as they mature and get older, they inflict pain on people. Now, a narcissist may not go on to be a serial killer, but they are a serial offender. They may not go so far as to actually take your life, but some of them, they have varying degrees of pain that they inflict on people. So they're still serial offenders. They just don't go the full, the full way and actually take away another person's life. Now they'll take away your dignity. They will uh, kill your reputation if they can, and a lot of them are very good at doing that. I mean, there's a lot of ways that they're serial killers without taking your literal life, but they will take things away from you. Again, like your dignity, your self-respect, your self-esteem. Yeah, they're kind of like serial killers in that regard, in that sense. All right, so what is it about these things that make these people 
these narcissists, a uh, malignant uh, narcissist that make or try it narcissist that makes them so harmful, makes them so dangerous. Well, let's talk about three things, and I think um, you could probably think of three more, maybe thirty more to my short list here. But we still need to talk about these. And number one is they're dangerous, highly dangerous, because of their deceit. Anything that is deceitful, I got to tell you, anything that is deceitful is potentially extremely dangerous. All right, let's use an analogy. Ready? Let's say that uh, you're enjoying a hamburger and you say, you know what this hamburger needs? It needs ketchup. Um... Seems to me like just about everything needs ketchup. Doesn't matter what you're eating. Well, let's exclude ice cream from the list, but just about everything else goes well with ketchup. All right, so somebody took out your ketchup bottle and they put something in your ketchup that wasn't ketchup. So let's be kind. Let's don't say it's poison, but let's say it's hot sauce, all right? So you've been to see. The label says ketchup, but what is inside of the ketchup bottle? You remember those, those, um, red squeezy things, I don't know, maybe they still have those, turn them upside down and squirt it on what, well, on just about everything, and you enjoy your your food, but what comes out is not ketchup, what comes out is hot sauce, and maybe you don't know it's hot sauce, maybe you're not paying attention, I mean, it looks different, so, you know, probably you would, but maybe they mixed it in with a ketchup, so you can't tell the difference, and then you take a bite out of your hamburger, and you say to yourself, that's not ketchup. At least it's not good ketchup, the way that I remember it. So, same thing applies to a nar narcissist. This is a pretty good analogy, because they are in a container, like a ketchup bottle. It doesn't say ketchup. The container, which is the person, says, nice guy. The container, the label on the container says, friend, I am your friend. The label may say, lover, I'm your, I'm your sweetie, I'm your sweetheart. It's mislabeled. What is inside is not sweetheart. What is inside is not friend. What is inside is not loyal and dependable. What is inside is narcissist, hot sauce. But you don't know that. You're fooled by the label. But once you begin to experience this person, then you suddenly realize, wait a minute. Well, maybe it's not so sudden, but eventually you will realize this is not the person that I thought he or she was, and it's not just a bad taste. Sometimes it's devastating. Sometimes they will destroy relationships. Now stop and think about a narcissist who is in your life. What damage? I mean, if you could t take out a sheet of paper and just start listing the damages that he or she did to you, what would be on that list? You know, did they literally steal from you? Did they hurt you? Did they destroy your self-esteem? Probably so. Did they make you think lower of yourselves? Did they turn other people against you? Stop and think of all the hurtful things that happened to you because you thought it was catch-up, because um, they deceived you, because their label was something. They mislabeled themselves. They misrepresented themselves. And we understand that. We understand perfectly how that works, but, you know, what, what are you going to do? Taste test everything before you take a bite out of it? You go to a restaurant, ask for ketchup. They bring you ketchup. Do you taste it first? Uh, you ever been to a restaurant and someone took the cap off the salt shaker? But you just trust, you're, you're a trusting person because, hey, you're just normal. And you turn the salt shaker upside down, the whole thing pours out on whatever it is you're eating. That's kind of like a narcissist, totally absolute positive, fake, but they're deceitful. They are fooling you, and you don't find out until it's too late. They're dangerous. Second thing we say they're dangerous is because, uh, well, they have sometimes explosive anger. Sometimes the, this is, by the way, the effective, the effective definition of a malignant narcissist, somebody who is very abusive. And who rages. Now, sometimes a narcissist will become angry, but they will keep it contained where you can't see it. And so they subtly, these people are sneaky. They very subtly go behind your back, and they're doing things to hurt you, and you don't even know it. By the way, if you hear some background noise, it has been raining here, and what you may hear is the rain, or you may even hear my air conditioner. But back to the point is these people are extremely, extremely 
angry. And they may not show it up front. You know, again, it's, it's deceit. And they are hurting you behind your back in ways that you may not even know. It's kind of like somebody who um, goes behind your back, contacts a lawyer because there's some litigation and they have your bank accounts frozen, but they don't bother to tell you. Well, sometimes narcissists actually do that if you're going through, for example, a marital dispute or maybe a business dispute. They actually do that. There was a story in the news about a guy in Logansport, Indiana. And his business was he made he made Batmobiles. That's what he does for a living. And apparently he's pretty good at it. But uh, he had a dispute with a customer, and the customer managed to uh, get his bank accounts frozen. How do you do business? You know, apparently the customer, I don't know the whole story, but was mad at him because uh, I guess he didn't... Uh, wasn't timely in making his payments, and so the um, so the guy who made the Batmobiles, you know, put him at the end of the line and said, okay, I'm going to get you back, and uh, he wound up with his bank accounts frozen. That's what narcissists do. They, they get angry, but you don't necessarily see their rage. You don't see it in their face. You don't hear it in their voice. They may not throw things. They may not assault you. But then a lot of times, these people actually do those things. I mean, they actually express it physically. They are flat out abusive. That's time, that's the time when you call the authorities, um, you know, rescue yourself. So they are deceitful. They're dangerous because they're very deceitful. And they are dangerous because they are easily, easily provoked to wrath. Let's put it in those terms. And by the way, they are easily, I was going to say irritated, but that's, that's too soft of a term. They, they are easily angered. And narcissists like you to do what they want you to do. And if you don't oblige them, they become enraged. I talked about this in an earlier video. Maybe it was yesterday. But uh, the analogy I used was a car that doesn't start. You ever get mad at your car? Because it won't start, it doesn't do what you want it to do. Your car doesn't know, your car is an inanimate object. But you gotta remember that a narcissist sees you as an inanimate object. You know, you're kinda like a tree. But they think that you feel pain the same way they do. Okay, but anyhow, just like you get mad at a car because it won't do what you want it to do, the narcissist will get mad at you because, well, they think you're a car. Not literally, but they think you're an object that is supposed to do whatever they want you to do. Go back to the analogy of the puppeteer and the puppet. I use that in almost every video. You know, they pull the string, they expect you to respond. And if you don't, they get mad. They pull it again. And sometimes they pull it harder. Somehow, some way, going to teach that puppet a lesson. You're an inanimate object. You're a puppet to these people. You don't have a will of your own, or should you, because quite frankly, they know better than you do in their way of thinking. So... Uh, they get angry. Number three is this, and this is really, really important. This is something that uh, we need to take into consideration and never, ever, ever forget it. It's just that important. These people lack effective empathy. Okay, just think of affection. They are not affectionate. Well, they are in the sense that they're faking it, right? Actors on a stage, they can fake affection. Uh, they're really good actors, and sometimes we tend to believe, sometimes, oftentimes, we tend to believe their act, and we confuse the act with the character, the character rather, with a real person. Well, what happens is, this is um, not real empathy, and if we believe this person really cares about us, we're going to be, to say, we're going to be disappointed. That's really an understatement. Uh, we think they got our back. And when we really, really need them, not only do they not have our back, not only are they, they not there to catch us when we fall, but they take great pleasure in watching us fall, in duping us. And that pleasure, by the way, is called Duper's Delight. We've talked about this before. It's been a while. But uh, Duper's Delight is when that lack of empathy is manifested when the narcissist takes joy in watching you get hurt when he or she caused the hurt because they tricked you, they duped you. 
And a lot of times they just express it with a smirk on their face or maybe they even laugh at you. Or, you know, they get a, uh, to them it's just a big joke and you're a fool. Sometimes, you know, they take it to extremes. I knew a narcissist and his way of displaying, I think he was a narcissist, his way of displaying duper's delight is when after he duped somebody, he would like to walk in front of them, make sure that they saw him. He would pace uh, when I saw him do this, it was really bizarre because at the time, I didn't get what he was doing. Uh, I didn't know he was a narcissist. But there were people that I knew that he had lied about or hurt or taken advantage of one way or the other. And he loved for them to see him. Duper's delight. It was kind of like, yeah, I got one over on you, didn't I? And he got a real kick out of that. So what happens is, this is, uh, what would we call it, self-empathy for the narcissist. He has great empathy for himself. Where did he get that? Well, he stole it from you. He transferred empathy, empathy rather for you, to empathy for himself. Because with a narcissist, you know this, it's all about him. It is all about her. They love themselves rather than others. So whatever love they displayed at the very onset of your relationship, you know that love bombing stage, that was all about loving themselves. I mean, that may be a bit hard for us to get a uh, handle around, but it was all about them loving themselves. See those two rectangles on the screen? Let's keep talking if you want. All you got to do is click one of those two rectangles and the conversation will continue. If not, thanks for stopping by and we'll see you all next time.